on Sunday, my cousin from New York City came over, which they hadn't done in ages. My mom had called them when she noticed that Jeffrey was suddenly having a couple good days and her sister had dropped everything to come see us while the opportunity lasted. I'm the oldest kid in our whole extended family, so I generally run around keeping the little ones from killing each other. But that day, they all got along. I sat on our back porch, thinking, drinking hot chocolate, thinking about Renee Albert and watching my brother and the cousins pound each other with snowballs for about 40 minutes, an endurance record for Jeffrey this year. When they came in, we had a real family style dinner. My mom had even dusted off that big thing in the kitchen called a stove, called the stove. And people were laughing and joking around like we used to last year. I mean, the outside observer, observer would notice there were a puppy bald kid there and the grown-ups kept pausing to look fruitively at him, but the mood was lighter than it had been since di diagnosis anyway. Jeffrey even got my Uncle Neil to do his famous impression of Peter Pan and Captain Hook fighting over dessert, which, only, which he only did once a year, and this was a really nice time. Then Jeffrey started falling asleep at the table. I guess all the running around and had been tough on his body. The adults were all taking their time over coffee and the cousins were in the family room watching SpongeBob. So I took Jeffrey up to bed. Even though he was only half awake, I got him to go pee pee and brush his teeth. Then we went to his room to get his PGs on, PJs on. He took off his shirt and I gasped. His arms were alarmingly welter of dark bruises. I hadn't thought of it after at the time, but I guess all the snowballs hitting him had taken a toll, even though his thick, even through his thick winter coat. He glanced up at me with this new look of total resignation that should never be on a five year old's face. I felt so bad for him that I read him two chapter of the, chapters of his favorite book, Flat Stanley, before I turned off his light. Later on, after the guests had left, I said good night to my parents and I got ready to go to bed myself. I had been it had I had been in a nearly great mood for about 36 hours, but unease was settling back in. When I was lying down all alone in the dark, I couldn't get comfortable for the longest time. I just kept seeing Jeffrey's arms over and over in my head and it hit me. I'd been in a dream world for a day and a half. But just because you get distracted by the silver lining for a little while, it doesn't mean there is not still a huge dark cloud behind it.